Hi, this is Bob. Been playing around with a neat little transceiver called the Pixie. These are uh, made in China. You can buy them in kit form or assembled. I bought this one assembled and this one has been modified for 80 meters operation. They are a real neat little transceiver. They say you can get a watt out of them. I run it at 9 volts and uh, I get 360 milliwatts. Now, the reason I do that is I increased the voltage to 12 volts and promptly blew the final. So uh, after I blew the final I put three little sockets in. Now you notice here up here the crystal here we are right up here. This is where the crystal goes. These are integrated circuit sockets that come in a strip and you can put them in there uh, to uh, insert your crystal. I stacked three of them on top of each other and soldered them together with my tiny soldering iron. You notice this is the way those sockets come. If you work on ICs too, what if you need a socket for a round IC? You can't find those anywhere. You can make them out of these. I can't tell you exactly where to get those. I don't know exactly where I got them. I got Well, I got them at a ham fest, so I don't know even what the guy's name was. But I'm sure they are available at uh, Mauser or DigiKey, uh, different suppliers. But they're IC socket pins in a strip, and they're actually round, which is really nice. And by putting two of those uh, in for the crystal here, now I stacked those up three deep and then I drilled holes in the plastic top and by doing that then you can insert a crystal when it's in the plastic case. I have this out of the case right now. So I have installed those two socket pins there and like I say uh, not on this one I've got another pixie but I blew the final so I put three of those right here for the final. Now this one is modified for 80 meters and I thought you might like that information. Uh, there was a one microhenry choke right here and I just unsoldered one end and pulled it up. I happened to have another one microhenry choke so I put those two in series which gives me a two microhenry choke. The two capacitors here were changed. One there and one there. I can point them out with my finger here. Uh, those were changed to 820 picofarads, both of them, and that works just fine for 80 meters. Now, some of the crystals I have did not oscillate uh, when I put it on 80 meters. The thing is that this uh, oscillator requires uh, different size capacitors in the capacitor network that connects to the crystal. So what I did it has a hundred picofarad and a hundred picofarad. These are on top of the circuit board. And what I did, I just tack soldered a uh, 47 picofarad at this location right there. And a 220 picofarad at that location right there. That goes across those two capacitors up here by the crystal socket. They are listed there on the schematic if you want to see them. And... Uh, and those then uh, allow the 80 meter crystals, all of them that I have, to work, even the FT243s. And I had, I took a little piece of wire and I put an FT243 in there and it worked just great. So I made up a crystal adapter. Here's my crystal adapter. This is number 26 wire wrap wire, very small wire. It just plugs into the two crystal socket pin assemblies that I made. And then I can plug in the FT243 crystals. Now this one here is for 40 meters, I know. I've got a couple of 80 meter ones here that go into this unit here for 80 meters. It works very good on 80 meters, no problems at all. Now the reason I run this thing on 9 volts is, is because I ran it on 12 volts once and promptly blew the final. So uh, I hooked up a new uh, final there, like I say, with, uh, with socket pins. And then I stuck my fingers onto the transistor, the final transistor while it was running and I found out that little stinker runs really hot on 12 volts. At 9 volts it just gets warm so that's what I'm doing. I'm running it at 9 volts. This is the 40 meter model. This shows you how the little 
integrated circuit uh, socket pins are stacked on top of each other and come up to the top of the case where I have drilled a couple of holes there so you can plug a crystal right in there. This is the 40 meter unit. This has got the uh, three little socket pins in for the final two. If I can show those, I don't know if I... Yeah, you can see the transistor there, which is upside down, down here. Now that's the final transistor, and it is plugged into the three little socket pins. That's kind of nice because I can then plug in different transistors. I tried a 2N3055, a 2N4427, a 2N5109. I found that the... Uh, the 2N2222 worked just as good as any of them in there. And I get 360 milliwatts out with it on 9 volts, and the transistor runs cool. So that's what I'm running here. And how does this thing work? Well, you got a crystal here. The crystal runs in a crystal oscillator. That's one transistor. That runs all the time when you turn it on. And when you're receiving a signal, your signal beats with that crystal. And that crystal then, and that oscillator, becomes your BFO, and it's a direct conversion receiver. And then when you go to transmit, you ground the emitter of the second transistor, which is your transmitting transistor, and that boosts up the output of that oscillator to, like I say, 360 milliwatts with 9 volts. Uh, problems with these. Well, <laughs> they pick up AM broadcast band signals. And uh, I was reading in Doug Dumas' notebook about that, about direct conversion receivers, and he recommended construction of a filter. So I did. This is a very low frequency EMI uh, choke for, for killing noise, very low frequency, and I put 15 turns. It's a three-quarter inch diameter. I put 15 turns by far wound wire I've got 2200 microfarads here. You see there's capacitors right here. There's a 0 0.03 microfarad capacitor on the input side and a 0 0.03 microfarad capacitor on the output side. On this one here I have two capacitors. It's really not needed. The one is fine. And then this is the power plug for the Pixie. And the only thing you have to be careful about, you wind that bifilar uh, winding there on that coil, is check your polarity over here. Make sure you got the plus on the plus and the minus on the minus. That's, uh, that's the way you do that. And what this does is this keeps the AM signals from coming in on your power supply leads and does a real good job of reducing your AM signals. Now, if you have a broadcast station uh, two blocks down the street, I doubt if you're going to keep them out with a Pixie. But uh, it works fine here because the stations are far enough away. So that's that. And I wanted to show you, I'm running the, uh, the battery I'm using here is the battery out of my, uh, out of my lawnmower. And, and I've got four, uh, these are two amp silicon diodes. You come in on the unmarked end, and the voltage comes out on the marked end. These are in series, and four of them drops the 12 volt battery down to 9 volts. And that keeps everything running cool in the Pixie. And uh, I'd rather do that than be blowing finals, because I blew finals when I read it directly off the battery. And what else can I mention here? Uh, I got the sockets in there. I talked about the broadcast interference. Like I say, the output's 360 milliwatts. Now, I bought my Pixie uh, from this guy here, Y-N-A-A-N, on eBay. And if you look for assembled 9-13.8 V-S Pixie, S-Pixie, that is, uh, this will come up. It's about the fourth one down, I think. There's a lot of guys selling them. But this guy, I've bought two of them. They were both shipped quickly. Uh, I got them within two weeks, and I've been very happy with them. And they were assembled in the case like this, in the plastic case like this, ready to go. And it was $7.99, including the shipping. So I just couldn't believe that. The first one I ordered, I, I didn't believe it, but I thought, well, I'll try, I'll try $8. And by golly, I got it, no problem at all. Now, when you, you put it on 80 meters, I think I mentioned before uh, here on 80 meters that you need to change, you need a 2.2 microhenry choke across there, or just take a 1 microhenry and put it in series with the one that exists. That's what I did. And two 820 picofarad capacitors. And then on the bottom here, for the 80 meter conversion, 
you need to put a 220 picofarad capacitor across right here and a 47 right there. I'm trying to show exactly where those go. I just tacked them on there. I figure uh, if, they, if they can tack solder SMD parts on an SMD board, I can tack them on like this. I'm, I'm holding this as carefully as I can and turning it around so you can see where they attach. But that, there's the 220 up at the top and the 47 down at the bottom. And that increases those capacitors to the right size for the 3.5 MHz crystals which helps a lot. Now some crystals will oscillate with the 100 picofarad capacitors in there as it originally came but I found that some do and some don't so uh, after putting the capacitors in all of my three and a half megahertz crystals oscillate. I hope this helps you guys out with the pixie especially with the modification to uh, 80 meters it works really good on 80 meters. That's it guys 73's and good DX.